Hello and welcome to Academic. I'm Chris Wood and this is Let's Elm. In this series we're making a web application using the Elm programming language. Okay, so first of all, an apology. Um, sorry I've not put out a video in a couple of weeks. Uh, I did actually make one, but it was garbage, so I decided to get rid of it and just record something new. Um, in this episode we're going to be doing a feature blit, which is essentially where I use the tools that we've learned in the previous episodes um, to add a lot of the features of the web application all at once. And then at the end, I'm going to discuss what I've done, the techniques I've used, if there's anything interesting that's come up. So let's get started. Okay, so the plan for today is um, I'll add this abilities section. And we need to record some extra information for these. And there's a slightly different, but it's more or less the same as attributes. I'll separate this out to make it look more like the character sheet, the attribute section itself. So let's get started. So what did I do there? Well, um, I changed the way this works. A bunch of stuff works here. We need to, uh, interestingly, like these are attributes are separated into physical, social, and mental, and you prioritize points going to them based on your character during character creation. So we need to have them in three separate sections. The way I've done it before, um, they weren't separated into sections, so it's harder to see. Um, I've modified this ex attribute view function. So now it takes the attributes dictionary and then a string for the, the actual attribute that you want. Uh, and then essentially it pulls that out of the dictionary, gives it a default of one. So basically if it's not there in the dictionary, when it calls get, it will return nothing. But we, we essentially, we know that it, it's going to be there. We know it's going to be there for a fact, so we don't need to worry about that too much. And if it's not there, if we had the string that we didn't put in the dictionary, then it would return one. Um, so hopefully that would tell us pretty quickly that something was wrong. Um, and then we have, uh, and then everything else here is pr pretty much the same. It, it makes the actual view for with the dots and stuff exactly the same as it did before. So if we have a look here, we should get all of our normal messages, edit the attributes, and if you look at the attributes, there we go, dexterity 5, strength 3, there we go, and that's what we've put in here. And we'll just double check and make sure that everything else is going, there we go, appearance and perception. Good. So these are separated in sections now, and I've labelled them with um, headers for their particular section. So on to the uh, ability section.
Okay, so let's quickly go over what I did there. You know, there's quite a lot of stuff. We've got this. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, okay, so here's our, our attribute section. It's unchanged. And then we have our ability section. And we have dots for each of our abilities. And if you click on them, let's just open this up and put it up here. Um, if you click on them, then it will modify the correct ability. There's a few things that are wrong at the moment, though, that we'll address in a minute. You can see here that um, EX ability, so let's go, let's go to the, the code a second and have a look at this. There's a few things that I added in here. First of all, I added in EX abilities, a type alias EX abilities, and you can see it looks like EX attributes. It's a dictionary with a string as the key, but instead of having uh, just an integer as the value, it, it has this tuple, which is bool integer. Now, there is a reason for this. You'll notice here on our attribute section that uh, you've got just dots from one to five. There's always has to be one here. Um, and then, but in a, the ability section, it's different. It has this box here, which is, uh, and then the five dots here, which by default are zero. There's, there's nothing in these ones. So uh, this means that there's a couple of things that we have to do. First of all, this is the, the favored box. Basically, this is a yes or no. So this refers to this bool. And then this is the, the integer value of them. And so we've added that into our model as another field, essentially. Um, and then we made a corresponding empty EX abilities um, function. So this basically just creates the, the default values of them. And this is useful. We can probably change later on. We have a big list of our, of our abilities, if we go down here. Um, this big long list here, which is very useful, but we can actually probably change this later on for our just our, our keys in that default dictionary up there. That might save us duplicating it, but for now we'll, we'll leave it like this. The next thing that we had to do was, let's talk about the view first. So uh, the view has been modified to this all abilities view model.ex abilities. And you can see here as well, we've added this, uh, well, we'll come back to that. And if we go down and have a look at our abilities section here, or all abilities views here. Now there's, I think, I don't think I've used this before, but let's just do an on format, make sure that it's looking like it true. Okay, good. Um, so I don't think I've used this before. This is the, the um, append function, basically, a double plus. So if you have a list on one side and a list on the other, it will append these two lists together. And so you've got a list here of HTML messages. This is what div is expecting, is the second argument. And then essentially what we've got here is we have this list, the default value, which is just the, the title. And if we go here, we should be able to see that. Let's do it up here again. And that's this title here, abilities. And then after that, it adds on, it does list.map, it takes our this function here, ex ability view, and let's have a look at that first and see what that does. It's, it looks very similar to the ex attribute view, except it takes in and it takes in the same arguments, like uh, the equivalent arguments, ex abilities and a string. And then we pull out of the dictionary again with the default. We have a default value of false and zero. This is our default value. Maybe we could put that in up there. Maybe we should we should put that in, separate this out as a little function essentially because we use this quite a lot. Um, and that means that we can change it. We can change it once, we change it everywhere, which would be nice. Um, Dicks.get, um, our EX ability, this is the name of the ability that we want, and our EX abilities, which is our abilities dictionary. Um, and then we want to pipe it into uh, maybe with default and give it this value. And then after that, this is pretty straightforward. We have our filled list and we use exactly the same thing. We just use the value. Just quickly to go over it, this is tuple unpacking. So this is pattern, pattern matching or destructuring. It's called a whole bunch of different things. Um, but essentially the product of this function is a tuple, right? With a bool and, uh, and an integer in it. And essentially what we're saying is that, right, we know it's gonna be that, and we actually want to take the values out of it, refer to the values. So what this does is essentially assigns a name to the value, the first value, the Boolean here, and the second value. And that means we can refer to them by name rather than saying like using tuple.first or tuple.second, whatever. And then we can just refer to it as normal. Now, when we actually map the abilities, we're not using, um, we're using just point dot as it was called before. Um, we need new functions. So we have converted point dot to be attribute dot and ability dot. And there's a reason for that. And let's have a quick look at them and that'll soon be apparent 
why that is. So attribute dot has just been renamed. It's exactly the same essentially as it was before. But ability dot, um, it, it, it requires some slightly different stuff. You can see here that it's using a different message. It's using edit ex ability rather than edit ex attribute. And then it has the ability's name and then a boolean, which currently we're just always giving it false, which is not, this is one of the things that's wrong with it at the moment. But this is referring to the, whether it's favored or not. And then the ability value. And if we go up and look at our messages, we've got a new message, edit ex ability, string bool int. And then down here, you can see that. So all of this is just hooking up. It's doing exactly the same thing. Update ex abilities, and we insert it into the dictionary. We know that it's going to be there, so it'll overwrite it. If it's not there, it would add something new. And so that's actually quite nice when you're debugging. You can see your, your dictionary is increasing in size and increasing in size because something's getting over, again, inserted instead of being sort of overwritten. Right, so that's all connected up there. Um, is there anything else? So yeah, and essentially we just add this into our view, and then this is what we have here. So let's uh, let's bring the app across quickly, and we'll show you the the new features that it has. So again, it's got the attribute section, it's got all of the different, and then it's got the ability section. And now you can see it has these boxes here, which indicate whether it's cast or favored. Um, and we can have a look on here and see that changing. If you look in ex abilities, you can see here it's got true and true and. It's got false for athletics, and that's right, and it's got false for occult, but if we go down to occult and then we click it, then it's got true, and we can say occult 5. There we go. It's favored, and we've got occult 5. So that's cool. Um, everything is connected up there now. So let's just go over how we actually did that. And there was a few bits and pieces that we needed to do. Okay, so firstly, we had to we had to tweak we had to tweak our messages. So now we have before we had a bool coming in here because I thought we'll have one message and it'll update either it'll update the whether it's cast or favored and its value. But that turned out to be quite uh, not not a great way to do it for a bunch of reasons. And so you can see here we've got we've just separated out so that we've got our edit ex ability a string and our int, and this comes in. Here and we've got this fun into this function again, the same as before. Um, but we've also got this new message toggle cast or favored, and this the name of the ability that is to toggle. Now we don't need to know whether it's true or false here because we're just changing the value. 
And let's have a look at that function. So toggle cast and favored, uh, essentially what we've done is we've pulled out the value from the EX abilities dictionary by its string. Uh, we have its favored and its current value. And then what we're wanting to do is we want to then take the current value that it is, because we've indicated we clicked on it, we want to toggle it, and we just invert it. So if it's true, it'll be false, and if it's false, it'll be true. And then we just insert that back into the dictionary again. Pretty straightforward for that. Now, what controls that is this cast or favorite box here. We've got its SVG again, same as before, and we've given it a size, and it's got this on click message toggle cast or favored and this EX ability. So it needs to bring this in and cast or favored. It needs to know whether it's currently clicked or not because it uses that to, to fill the color. So it's very similar to before. We're using svg.rect instead of svg.circle as we use for the dots. Um, and then we just specify size and stroke width and all sorts of things like that. Now, when it comes to actually making the ability section. Now we've got EX attribute view. And what we want here is, uh, oh, sorry, not EX attribute view. So we've got EX ability view now, and it looks very similar to it did before. We've already pulled out whether it's cast or favored. So we've got this to pass into this function down here, cast or favored box. So we give it the ability and a favored as we saw up above, and then it gives the text and then it gives the dots. So that's, that's essentially everything that's required for that. And everything is going in as it should. I'm quite pleased with that. We've made quite a lot of progress. And I think that we'll stop that episode right there. In the next episode, we're going to add a bit of styling because as you can see, this is getting a bit unwieldy. It's, it, it's starting to really offend my eyes. It's ugly looking. So we're going to give it some styling. But to give it some styling, we need to do a couple of things. We need to compile our app down so that it's embedded into a HTML file so we can link CSS to it. And then the CSS that we're using for the styling, we don't want to just use raw CSS, we're going to use Elm CSS. And that's a whole other kettle of fish, and getting that set up is a little bit of a job. So that'll be what the next video is about. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you found that episode useful. If you did find it useful, please like this video. Uh, if you didn't find it useful, then dislike it, that's cool. Um, if you didn't find it useful, please tell me why um, and down in the comments and let me know anything that you'd like me to explain again or to improve or to do an episode about. But thanks very much. I've got over 80 subscribers now and I'm very, very pleased at that. Um, hopefully we can make the next 100 subscribers pretty soon. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Uh, if you want to ask me questions, you can ask them in the comments section or you can follow me on Twitter and ask me there. I'm at Chris Boswood. So thanks very much for watching and see you next time.